I'm Peter Finn and I'm the project manager of instrumentations at Telemark. Today I'd like to talk to you about setting up a model 861 deposition controller. So first we'll go to settings and display. The default in display are pretty good. You may want to review if there's anything you want to change. All the graphs are, you can turn off or on right there and you can um, change the display averaging that uh, smooths out the rate and thickness displays uh, but three is pretty good. Next we'll look at utility. First thing is you want to make sure that you have the right crystal frequency to match the crystals. Uh, uh, 6 megahertz is the most common so that's the default. And we have the uh, different protocols for RS-32, Ethernet setup. Uh, right now I have the touch volume turned down. You can change that by just pressing on it and giving it a different number. Hit OK. You'll notice when we exit it will say are you, want to, are you sure you want to save that? I'll say yes. Now we'll go back to utility. If confirm saves to disable, and it'll ask us, do we want to do that? Yes. Now when we go back there and confirm saves are disabled, if we change anything, uh, like we could change, pause on layer complete, turn that to on. When we exit, it no longer asks us if we want to confirm that. So it makes it a little bit faster. So I'm going to turn that back on. And so for our example, we're going to set up some manually made outputs. By default, when you receive an 861, uh, it's going to have a bunch of all, uh, outputs. You want to clear all first. Okay, so now I'm going to first set up a custom-made output. And first I'll give it a name, which is P R S. And we'll select a card, card one. It's like the pins, you'll see that for that card, the, there's outputs numbered one through eight. So we'll select the first one. And then we need to give it a condition that will trigger that relay to close. And then so this case, we want it to be when we're not in process. So first we'll say not, and then we'll say event in process. And that's all we need for that output. Now we could do another custom one. And this is going to be the opposite. Again, we go to the card and then the pin. So now we've, we've used up the first output, so now we have the second output free. We'll take that one, and now we'll say this one will simply be the event of in process. So now we have two manually created outputs. Next, we're going to uh, use the automated, uh, automatically generated outputs. So we'll go to source, source one. This one's going to have 12 pockets. 
and it's going to have uh, a connected to an indexer. So instead of manual, we want a binary. In this case, we'll use a binary where one equals uh, all zeros. Uh, the other type of binary is where the the first binary number past zero is the starting point for one. But in this case, we'll use the all zero. Now when we exit and go back to outputs, you'll see that we've automatically generated those outputs that are needed for the binary, for the uh, pocket selection. So next we will go um, and make one more manually made output. So now we see that we've got this down to six. So seven is the next empty one. So now we can give this a name. And in this case, we want E, e underscore. Uh, M2. Okay. And so we're still on card one. I select the pin, so it shows that on card one we have two outputs left. So this is going to be number seven. Now we have now we can, we can have a more complicated um, condition string. Oh. No, we can't. Let's see. We need to. Okay, so f so for the next condition string, uh, we want to uh, have it conditional upon um, materials, and in this case, we want to make some materials. So right now we have the default ones that come on the 861. These are just temporary default ones, so you can delete those. Okay, so now we're going to make a new one. And we can just first make a temporary name for it. Call this M1. That's our material. Now, if we need a couple other materials in other locations, we can just make a new material. We're going to call this M32. It's going to put it in the number two slot, but we can move that by changing the number and change that to 32. Now, normally you you wouldn't you would name this actual material that the material name that would make sense to you. Okay, so let's go back to setting up the this um, output that we made down here and give it in a condition that we're going to say that if it's one of those two materials then we wanted something to do oh actually first we're going to put it in brackets so first we put a bracket on that side say material one or material 32 And then we'll end that bracket. So it's one of those. And we're in process. Uh, so that is an event of in process. And we are not aborted. So then we'll say and not uh, event aborted. So now this will uh, open the relay number seven 
if we're one of those two materials and the we're in process and not aborted. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's a oxygen um, bleed into the chamber. So now we'll exit out of that. So now we, we have set up um, automatic ones and manual ones. Now, you want to do this in the orders that you have um, wired up your system, or you do this first uh, and then wire it uh, how you've uh, arranged it here. But anytime you do an automatic, it always is going to fall into the empty slot. So right now we have eight as empty. So if we go back to source and we want to add a shutter, right now we have the source one shutter relay is none. So if we add the, the usual normally open and then we go back out and look at outputs. Now you see number eight is the source shutter is automatically been generated and put there. So you always want to use the automatic ones if you can, uh, at, and then use the custom ones uh, if, if you can't get them automatically generated. So we have the same thing for the source uh, as the, the sensor has a lot of the same types of things. One difference is if you have a, a dual shutter, when you go to shutter relay type, you're going to see dual. And so usually you have a dual on sensor one and two. You're going to exit that and go to two and have it say dual also. So there, uh, sensor one and, and two can toggle back and forth using the dual function. And now if we go to outputs, we'll see that there's just one relay uh, added, and that's for toggling between the dual sensors. Let me go back to source, the other or a sensor, other types of um, control is if you have a, um, a multiple crystal head, like a six crystal head, that's going to use uh, binary or direct if you're using the telemark style uh, binary is what you want to use that that's also going to let's see it's not going to like that because we have the dual shutter so we, we can normally we just turn that to none and change the control to binary and then um, you need to know the number of crystals. So if it was six crystal head, we'd say six there. And now when we exit, oh, we have, we forgot to change sensor two. It still says dual, so we'll say none on that. And now it, it will be okay. And then we go back to output and we'll see that the output is automatically generated the sensor binary for a six crystal sensor. If we go back there, if we go back to the sensor and change it to back to one and change control back to manual, exit, exit, go to outputs. We'll see that those automatically generated outputs have, are, have been removed. So the next thing we want to look at is inputs. So by default, there's the demo ones in here, so we want to clear all. And now we're going to look at putting in some inputs. Now, you can have an input, like say we went back to source 
and our source one has an has an indexer that we're sending out and we're looking at what's the type of feedback from that indexer and usually you just need the in position so you know that you're in a pocket so now when we exit we'll look at there's been an automatically generated input so now uh, say that's good say we want to make our own input so first we uh, click on it and then we give it a name uh, so in this case we're going to say um, so there's our our automatically generated input let's uh, go back and turn that one off so we'll go to back to source and say in position is no feedback now when we go to inputs there's there's nothing there so now we're going to make an input this one's going to be for uh, someone who has it connected to a PLC then wants to automatically start up the process so you can give it a name select the card so it's just one input card select the first input and now you see that we've we've created an input but it doesn't do anything and so to, to make that input useful we go to actions and we can go to this first one there's no action and so in this case we want to start the process so we select start process we give it a condition and so our condition is that we see input one and so now whenever input one is true it will start the process and that's how you connect an input to actually doing something if it's not an automatically generated input once we have set up all the IO and we want to go back and set up materials so there's the material we made before you want to grab a material that's on our list here you can use that name or you can add or change it and we go into edit so we start with the thickness now the thickness is only where you run a, it as a film as a, as, a, as a just a material instead of a process so normally you leave that at zero you set up the sensor and the crystals pocket numbers the density and the impedance are what when when you select a material like we've selected aluminum in here those numbers are automatically filled in uh, if you have a material that's not on that list in the 861 manual there's even more materials and you can fill these two uh, parameters the density and the impedance in manually or uh, if if you have a material that's not even on that list you can read the instructions in the manual that show you how to uh, cre create those numbers um, for unknown materials tooling factor is important the crystal sensor head relative to the substrate may be farther or closer to the source uh, than the substrate and in the manual it explains how to put in the tooling factor to compensate for that next we come down to the PID so we have the proportional gain is the P the I is integrated time constant and the D 
is the derivative time. Uh, this is generally a good, uh, the default is a good starting point. The manual has uh, explanation how to refine that so that you end up with a, a smooth rate of deposition. Then we get into the, the part where you're setting the soak and the pre-deposit, the time and the power for those. We, we do have the um, option to select a, a sweep pattern for each of those steps. Deposition rate, very important to set that. We have rate ramps, by default is disabled. So during deposition you can change the rate to go up or down. If we change that to, uh, we can set the ramps either with a, at a certain thickness or a certain percent of thickness. And then you'll see that now it starts to show more uh, uh, parameters that we can set. So once we've set this to a certain number, then it will set the, the, the stop. Again, we can change the sweep pattern. We also have uh, the ability to uh, have things happen after the deposition, and that's what is called the feed. Uh, so you can have ramp down time and a different pattern. We have um, is that the important thing like maximum power, minimum power, deviations, the dwell time. If you have a shutter on your sensor and you have a really long, uh, a really thick deposition uh, and you want to save the life of the crystal, you can use the uh, sample and hold to uh, do that. Crystal marginal, by default, we always send it out as 82%. Uh, that just seems to be the traditional number, but you can set that to uh, whatever number that works for you. Crystal fail gives you a number of options uh, when you have, have the either a single crystal or or you have a backup crystal. So you can simply halt. You can go to time power if you just have a single uh, crystal. Or if you have a backup crystal, then you can switch. And then the switch time power, if the backup crystal fails, uh, then it will go to time power after that. So here's where you set up the, the backup uh, sensor and crystal. It may be in a different spot, so you'd have a different tooling factor. And so once you've set up your material, then you want to go and make your process. So we make a new process here, and we'll just call this give that a name and go in and edit add a layer edit that layer so we'll take a material that we just made you, usually so this is where you it could uh, you use the material thickness in the that is saved in the material but usually you're going to go in and put some sort of thickness on it Usually you want to use the pocket number that's in the material, uh, but in some cases where you have the same material in multiple pockets, you can use this to change the pocket to uh, the other pocket that has the same material. 
and you just keep adding more layers. Edit material one, get that a thickness, and so on. And so you can have up to 99 layers there. So when you go back out to the um, main screen here, you go start. And so this is where you, you select process. So we'd select the one we just made. And we could start. Now it's not on a system, so it's not going to do anything right now, so we'll abort that. If you, and then we'll reset that and select. If you were just going to select a film, that just means that it's a one material and, and it, the thickness is set in the, in the material itself. We have uh, run numbers, which you can reset that to a different run number. You will see if we go back over here to results that there was the run that we just had. Um, you can with the with the USB. Um, so in USB, we we can backup the system. So here's some backups I've already made. If you push this button, you can have a um, backup of the uh, current configuration, all the materials, which I, I recommend that everyone do that. It makes it really easy if you ever had to make another identical system or uh, needed to restore it for some reason. You can individually move uh, process and materials to the USB with those buttons. Uh, the run da data that will store the last 16 run, uh, the general information for those. If you need to back up, or I mean if you need to uh, upgrade your software, um, we can send you the latest software and you can put on the USB in the right folder and then when you press uh, that, you get the options to select one of the versions of software. Uh, the software is, you're able to upgrade and downgrade without any problem that shouldn't affect any of your, your settings that you have. And the eject uh, just closes the USB. Um, usually that is not absolutely necessary, but it's of course, it's an always a good idea. The other uh, screen here is the interface. There's nothing right now. Um, if you're connected to a Windows uh, program that we supply, or if you're running the RS-232, this interface screen here will show you all the traffic that's going back and forth over the RS-232. Um, on the back on the main screen, if you cycle through pressing this I here, you'll see you'll have the different uh, uh, graphs. And you get to this point here, you can see the true-false of all the inputs and outputs. You can page down to see more. And then over here, you'll see that uh, you have the source uh, with the, the power setting and with the health and frequency of the crystal. This is um, a, connected to a real crystal right now, so you can see that the frequency is fluctuating just a little bit at, uh, in atmosphere. And then back to the, the main screen there. Uh, we have the, the shutter here. So you get the outline, it, it's, um, it's open. So this is a source shutter. The, the sensor shutter, there's, there's nothing built in to change that. It, 
it's sort of designed just to work when, when there's a crystal failure or you're selecting a different crystal. Uh, the other thing is the manual control. Manual is for changing the power uh, manually that controls the emission on the power supply. And so if it's blinking, that means that it's active. So even if we were running a process, the power wouldn't change because it's controlled by the, the handheld uh, manual. So I'll turn that off. Okay, well, I hope this has been informative.